Hey everybody, this is Bert. And behind me you can see a big vast expanse of uh, Endorness here. And uh, I plan on filling that Endor space up with some ATSTs blowing up stuff and getting blown up themselves. So uh, naturally I need to make a blown up ATST head. I want to do specifically the scene where the two logs come crashing into the head of the ATST. So we're going to take a modern ATST sculpt and swap out the plastic head with a cardboard head that will be all smashed up. So let's get into it and I'll show you how we do it. No skill customs. So here I started tracing the 3.75 inch ATSD head on a piece of board. Now a couple things I would do differently. I used like a matte board, kind of a thicker board. I would maybe try this with poster board. I think that might actually work pretty well, especially when it came time to crushing. It was a lot harder to crush than I, than I had expected. The other thing is I would have started by tracing the back of the head first so that the seam ends up at the back of the head not the front of the head so that's just a just a couple of little tips if you're going to try this out it's pretty straightforward though and it doesn't have to be perfect remember you are going to smash this thing at the end but ultimately i just set it on there trace the outline as closely as i can and then uh rotate it trying to have the edge of of one tracing match up with the edge of the next tracing here i've cut out the little template that i made and i started scoring at each of the seams so that uh, i could you know begin folding it and making the, the general head shape now once i have this all scored and folded what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold the whole thing together not with tape because i just don't think tape lasts very long i'm going to use uh i'm going to glue little strips of poster board to hold together now that we have the basic head we need to add on some of the details like this kind of rounded curved piece right there and so what I found was the bottom of one of those bubble machine bubbles, you know, those little vending machines with the little, you know, cost you a quarter, you get a little bouncy ball or whatever. So I'm going to cut the kind of lip edge of that off and uh, use that for each of the sides. Now I'm going to make some of the other flat details that are on the ATST. And so I'm just kind of holding up my scrap of mat board and lining it up with the edges of, of the different parts. And I'm really pretty much just going to hand draw things. If you're not, you know, an artist per se and you have a tougher time just kind of eyeballing it, uh, what I would do is maybe use some tracing paper and trace the the shapes and then transfer that onto a board now i could see you getting fancy and using an exacto knife to cut out these shapes but i'm using a fairly thick board so you can actually like see the the thickness of these details and uh you got to remember this thing is just going to be blown up looking anyway so it's okay if if it's kind of rough at the edges all right here you can see all the details i'm going to do for the side of this thing uh, you really don't need to go overboard with it remember it's just going to be smashed up there's going to be smoke effects and light and uh, painting so I think this will be plenty all right here it is side by side with the original actual toy um, you can see I kept the, the top pretty much flat I thought I'd add back details once I smashed this thing up and see which ones would even show anymore and then the, the bottom I made pretty much flat too with just a few holes in them on the sides I poked holes through the cardboard and into the plastic and I'm actually using the the real actual guns. I thought rather than having to sculpt all that stuff I would just reuse the the real guns. And here it is. Now one thing, um, I, you know how I said I put the holes in to, to put the, the body together which you're seeing right here. I would actually, that's one of those things I would wait to do until the very end because uh, what happened was when I smashed this thing that hole became extra big and it made it kind of wobbly and loose. So even though it's fitting on really nicely here, it was a little too loose. And then this top piece, this railing thing, I think that was from a, a Force Awakens Snowspeeder or something like that. Okay, now my plan was just to kind of squish this whole thing with my hands. I thought maybe what I would do is use an X-Acto knife and, you know, start it out a little bit. Uh, kind of, that way I would have some control over it. But <laughs> this, this thing was just too sturdy, uh, the way I built it. So that's why I was thinking maybe I would do this again with poster board for the main head but then you still use the the map board for the the detail pieces just because poster board doesn't have enough thickness you wouldn't even hardly know they were there otherwise so uh what i decided to do is bust out the hammer and give it a couple smashes i gotta say it was a little disheartening when when the whole thing just kind of cracked in half and the, the top flew off of it and then you know i'm losing an atst eyeball uh but, you know, uh, once I removed the top and I could actually just squish it with my hands, because I think really ultimately what was making it too sturdy was the, the top board in there. 
and uh, I could squish it with my hands, I got a pretty satisfying uh, smash to it. So ultimately I had to rip and tear the, the top to get it back in place once this whole thing was squished. But I just filled in the gaps with little bits of poster board, thought it made it look kind of like broken and busted, so, so I'm going with it. Plus I know that the top, if you look at pictures from the movie, the top is where most of the, the explosion and smoke is coming from anyway, so a lot of it's going to be obscured. Now that the head is built, it's time to give it a base coat of gray paint. I just use uh, apple, apple Barrel Craft Paint, and I found this great one called Rock Gray. And, uh, oh yeah, confession, I'm actually not just going to paint the, my smashed head ATST. I got three others that I'm going to paint too. So here you can see them side by side. The, the flat gray uh, really matches the, the original gray paint, but, but uh, just the flatness of it, the non-shininess of it, makes it look so much more like metal and not just like plastic. Once I have them painted, just the base coat, I plan on doing some weathering and stuff like that later. But uh, now I want to actually run some, some wires through so I can have it light up. And uh, what I use is I just use little uh, fairy light LEDs. And because um, if you watch my other videos, I got a lot, way more of these than I could ever use. Um, and so I'm using a wire to kind of wind it down through the bottom of the head. Uh, so I thought I saw this picture where there's a little bit of glowing light underneath the chin when it blows up. So I want to have a light down there. And then most of the lights are actually just going to be sticking out the top of the thing. Now, when I put the lights in, um, you can't tell so much when I video record this, but in real life, the individual lights stand out too much. So what I did to, to fix that was I actually hot glued them all. I put a ball of hot glue around each light, and that kind of spread the light out so it didn't look like these individual little bulbs so much. And then on top of that, I actually painted each one white. Additionally, to act like smoke and to spread out the glow a little bit, we're going to be using polyfill. And I got to be totally honest with you, I got this idea from a gentleman named Barry Riddle, who did this phenomenal living room-sized diorama of, of the Hoth setup that you see here. And so I'm trying to do like a scaled down version of that to, to light up the, the ATST and make it look like it's on fire. So I took the polyfill, I did a light haze of yellow spray paint, you can actually still see the yellow on my hands here, and uh, then I did a, a light coat of orange and red, and then another light coat of black on some of the white stuff at the top. And uh, that's, that's how I got this. It takes a lot of experimenting to get it right. He's got a whole system, uh, if you go and look it up, um, to do just absolutely huge, enormous explosions. But this is like a little small thing, so um, I found my, my trick worked pretty well for this. Then uh, once I have that settled, it's time to actually begin weathering the ATSTs. So what I did was I just kind of painted a wash of a darker gray, a pewter gray color, also by Apple Barrel. But uh, there's all sorts of different brands that have similar quality paints. And uh, I basically, I dipped my brush in the paint, I dipped my brush in the water, painted it on there, and then when I overdid it, I would just wipe it off. I made sure to put, uh, you know, I wanted lots of dark gray in, in the cracks and crevices, but I didn't want it to be too perfect. I also wanted to put the dark gray at places where the, the ATST had gotten scrunched and beat up and dented. I also added black in areas to make them look extra dark, and I added a little bit of nutmeg brown to make a couple little spots here and there look rusty. I also painted the tips of the guns black. I thought that made them look more like real guns and not like plastic toys. Weathering is my favorite part of any project. I just love making things look beat up and dusty and dirty and scuzzy. So uh, I really enjoy this, but if, if you're not too sure about it, try it on some toy that, you know, maybe like a, a shell of an old vintage Y-Wing that's all busted up or something like that. Uh, that's a good place to practice. Something that has a little some details for the water to cling to when you use a wash of paint. Sometimes rather than going after details and indentations, I'll just paint something entirely and then wipe it off with a paper towel. And I, you know, I like the effect that that does too. Looking at the movie, you can see that the ATST feet have like layers of dirt. There's kind of like a tannish color to represent the dried mud and then there's a darker brown to represent the fresher mud. So I tried to do the exact same thing. I did the tan first and then I did the brown over top but I way overdid the brown and I was a little unhappy with it so I had to just wipe it with water first because dry 
taking a dry paper towel was not getting enough off. So I watered it down and uh, it left just, just enough brown in the cracks and, and crevices that I thought it was actually pretty cool. So I was pretty happy with that in the end. After that, I just layered on a little, a little bit of green to make it look grass stained and uh, some flakes of leaves that I had left over from my Endor bunker setup, which I just kind of glued on there. All right, let's check out the finished product. And here it is against the unpainted original ATST head. And here it is in place on my Endor setup. Now I know that there was a Target battle pack back in the day that had some logs with it, but I wasn't really happy with the sculpt of those. So I went for what I think is a more realistic log that came with the with the uh, Robin Hood and also the Ewok battle wagon. Uh, I found two uh, broken Robin Hood battle wagons one time at a garage sale. So I bought them, not really knowing what I was going to do with them. And so I used those logs. I had to patch a couple holes, and I had to make the end a little pointier using some uh, air-dry clay, but uh, painted it up and tied it with some twine. I know you really came here to see my smashed ATST, but I thought I'd show off some of the other ones since I painted them all at the same time. And uh, you can see some of the details are just uh, there because I used a, the wash of dark gray like I was talking about earlier. But I did every once in a while paint some specific little markings to match uh, the models that were used in the movie. Speaking of models, I uh, painted an old Ertl model kit from when I was a kid. Probably 1996 or something like that. Uh, I had once painted it a long time ago, but I went for more of a blue gray. So this time I painted it the uh, the same rock gray so it matched all the rest of my ATSTs. Here you can see how small it is compared to the ATST. I'm planning for some sort of a forced perspective thing with it being in the background looking like it's especially far away. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of No Skill Customs. I'm not done with my indoor scene yet, though. After, now that I've finished all these ATSTs, i got to load up this scene with tons of foliage, imperials... Ewoks and Rebels. So like and subscribe and you'll find out when I finish up my Endor scene for real.